Hey guys, my name is Blessing Kure and this week I'll be joining the girls on the Life As It Is podcast to discuss the role of Nigeria's creative community in immortalizing the legacy of the NSAS movement for future generations. You don't want to miss out on this conversation. See you there! Hello guys! We know you've been fascinated by the glorious voices behind the Life As Is podcast. Well, look no further, because we're here! Your girls, Taiwo and Fakumba. But we've also got other names, Taiwo. What other names? Table Shakers. Because we're always shaking tables. We are the philosophical princesses. <laughs> what the hell are we talking about? We're a lot of things. We're everything you want us to be. So, if you like discussions on hard hitting topics, do you know how many children have died? Two millions. <laughs> You're a change maker and you like to use your voice to make a change. If women are mostly affected, I want to make sure more women have food on their TV. You understand? Yeah. Then the Life as Age podcast is the show for you. Also keep it locked for our wind down session. I'm in love with two men, I don't know which one to be. <laughs> and to come back to my To help you sell your market. So please exactly. That's what we do here. We sell market for people. This really is your show. Join us every week and we'll be discussing all the things you like so ladies and gentlemen, this is the Life As It Is podcast. Hello guys, hello to everyone listening. This is another episode of the Life As Is podcast with your girls, Taiwo and Takumba. And today we've got an amazing spoken word artist with us and, and a woman of many talents. Um, her name is Blessing Kure. Um, we will get her to introduce herself, tell us about herself. So Blessing, talk to us about what you do and who you are. Hi, Blessing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. So, um, I'm a multimedia personality. I deal in different forms of media, including audio, spoken word, poetry, uh, mm. radio, vlogging, mm. and, well, all the moving parts of it. I'm mm. also an entrepreneur and um, a lifestyle and travel vlogger. And mm. still on the media, I'm still a voice artist. So I'm a mm. freelance mm. voice artist. Mm. And That's it's very impressive. It. Very, yeah, very, very nice. Uh, like I said, she wears many hats. So, yeah, um, blessing. We'll start off with you know the uh, events of the last couple of days. Um, I think a lot okay. of people, a lot of people have been aware of what's been happening. So, how how has that affected you? How has it had any impact on you as a person, as a Nigerian? Has it had any impact on you? What happened? Yes, it it has. Okay. Um, I travel. I travel a lot around the country to vlog in a bit to promote unity and to debunk um, certain misconceptions about tribes and ethnicities. Mm -hmm. So I use my vlogs to address some of those and just to enlighten people. So I've had encounters with um, the establishment, the SARS establishment really? in when I was in the Southeast. There hasn't been much of that. I haven't had any experience in the North. But mm. in the southeast, traveling to Port Harcourt, travel, staying in Ouarid, going to Enugu, of course, these are encounters that make up people's everyday lives there. And so, seeing that people were standing up to speak against this was important. Was was and was exciting. In the beginning, it was like, okay, we need to address this, and it mm. took a lot for me to. I had to go out and march. I think I was ill a bit and I wasn't able to go out for the first match and I mm. felt terrible because I needed to confront this. I had a certain incident that I hadn't gotten over it. Every time I see a checkpoint, it just, I just start really? firing and I had to go out to march. Mm. Um, I had to go out to march and, I, and it was important to me that I was there in person aside supporting mm. the movement online, mm. aside mm. Um, running free voiceovers for visual artists and mm -hmm. um, campaign audios. I did free voiceovers throughout the movement in English, mm. Hausa, Pigeon, mm. just to get the word out there. But aside mm. that, I had to go out on the streets for myself. Mm. And mm -hmm. so something that was really important for me. Mm. Of course. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's really important at the end of the day to be, you know, apart from being, yeah. you know, sitting at home and being a social media protester. But I think it hits different when you're on the field by yourself. So that's really good. Well done. Basically, it was a roller coaster. Yeah, it was. I just wanted to add that it was a roller coaster of emotions. I mean, throughout the two weeks, uh, the first twelve days of the protest, it, it was largely anger, being willing to speak up, being willing to demand for justice, being willing to act on it, hoping for a better Nigeria. Honestly, mm -hmm. I keep saying this that there is no time when I sang "We Are the Leaders of Tomorrow" mm -hmm. that I actually mm -hmm. felt it like mm -hmm. this past two weeks. Mm -hmm. I have never believed that song, not even mm -hmm. as a child. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I 
I believe it now as an adult because it, it seems yeah, doable. Yeah, because it's playing it's out, like, right? Like, yeah, actually, yeah, it yeah. Soon, so mm. yeah. That was very mm. important for me. That's that's amazing. Um, going by what you have told us, obviously we can see your heart in this. So, as a young Nigerian creative, um, do you think you have personally felt the burden to use your voice to ensure that the legacy of this protest endures? I mean, um, stemming off of the works of Chino Achebe, you know, oh, Wale Shoinka and Christopher mm-hmm. Kibo, and on the likes of them who were very heavy in documenting the um, using their voice to document the histories of the past, you know, from the civil war and everything. So, do you feel that you have a personal burden to ensure that the legacy of this protest endures and that combats the um shifting narrative that's begun yeah. you know that's already been set in motion by the past yeah. that be you know with the with how they're trying to what's it called downplay the event pretend yeah. like it didn't happen so what is your responsibility yeah. in preserving that um thankfully we're in an age where we can document and and keep track of every single thing just mm-hmm. before this interview i saw forensics from international organizations saying mm. they um have used satellite footage to compare mm. the images and we're able to point out exactly where the four the four oh. major footage were found um, okay. where they were shot from at the toll gates and, and okay. the city was from satellite image and everybody that okay good if satellite can create forensics for this because we're aware oh that, that's, that's wonderful today, they have yeah. cleaned they have cleaned up the lucky toll gates in a bit to mm-hmm. clean up lagos and make lagos yeah. beautiful again but yeah. Again, people are asking questions because you are washing a place that is supposed to be evidence, air quotes. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So the fact that there are a lot of videos and people are taking these videos off Twitter now to save hmm. them in drives, to save hmm. them in clouds, to save yeah. them in, in video video form with, with mm. timestamps. With mm. um, it's, mm. it's everywhere. So if, if, a, if A deletes it from his or her phone, B will certainly have it. Mm. If B doesn't have it, C has it stashed somewhere. Mm. is it on whatsapp is everywhere so i think Mm. the fact that we have this in in front of us lets us change the narrative this isn't like history books that whoever is the is the writer uh, scribe at the time writing whatever they feel like writing so now we're seeing this and we're seeing the narrative trying to get being changed and we're Mm -hmm. like uh -uh, you can could you take a minute to watch this please at 20 something seconds did you see this happen we have our footage and we have everything and personally Mm -hmm. i feel the burden to document the emotion Mm. Um, that people went through um, mm. during this time to mm. we're documenting the facts we're documenting mm. the figures but people's the emotions because people people if you are using logic to judge certain instances it's easier to rationalize and mm-hmm. then take out the humanity from mm. certain occurrences but mm. if say, I drop a spoken word piece i did a spoken word i did a uh, voiceover for this videographer in just that went out for protest and midway mm. through it i started to cry Hmm. I started to cry because I was calling the names of these people and the names were so many. And hmm. the, yes, they were young and they were I listened to me. that. I hmm. listened to that actually. I heard I it. Have it, to be, it could be me. Really? Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you the link after the interview. It could be it yes, could have been please. me. It could have been hmm. all the times that maybe a car was stopped. It could have been the time I had to run. It could have been mm-hmm. anything and nobody will find you. I think if you personalize hmm. and internalize the, the possibility of it being you or hmm. someone you love then you mm. won't see comments like, oh, these people are wasting their time. <laughs> yeah. Then you wouldn't feel the need to make certain comments. So I, I feel the personal burden to document it, using poetry again to mm. pull the emotions from people. Mm. I can mm. pull tears from your, tug at your heartstrings, yeah. um, appeal to your humanity with mm. my voice, with mm. my writing. Mm. And I will do just that. So that if 30 years from now, they are recounting the history or they are recounting mm. 2010, 2020, 20th mm-hmm. October, and then mm-hmm. you are watching it and it looks like just a movie. When mm-hmm. you listen to the emotions, you can yeah. then understand what people went through. I've, mm-hmm. I've, 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 I've not, I didn't sleep that night. I cried all mm-hmm. through and, and I made sure I didn't have to voice anything for any other campaign. Otherwise, mm-hmm. I, had to, I kept breaking down midway. And mm-hmm. these emotions conveyed for people to feel it mm-hmm gives more better understanding hmm. okay um speaking of oh, that's that's something indeed Victor, yeah it really um you just spoke of what that night particularly the impact it had on you you couldn't sleep yeah. do you think do you feel like there's been an interruption to uh to the rhythm of your flow as a spoken word artist as a poet so because of these events do you feel like there's been a break in the words coming out that you could form and and 
put on paper to express what um, the emotions you're feeling. No, I my mantra is to feel your feelings. Mm. Um, one of the major things people shy away from this aspect, but I try as much as possible to convey it in my writing will be pain. Because mm -hmm. I tell people I'm a happy, dark writer. I'm a happy person. Mm -hmm. I'm a stable person. Mm -hmm. But my poetry appeals to the part where people are constantly trying to run from. Who says mm. crying is bad? Mm. Who says being sad is a bad thing? It's not mm. palatable, but it doesn't mean that you don't learn from those. Mm. You don't pick up from those pieces. So my poems are usually dark and... Um, tend to appeal to the more hurtful emotions that people constantly run away from or mm. are in denial about. Mm. Maybe uh, sexual harassment, mental health, and big on mental health, um, mm -hmm. depression, suicide, and killings, intertribal killings, ethnic killings. And yeah. I'd say the instance of 20, I haven't put pen to paper for this incident solely because I have pieces in the past that even speak on incidents like this. Hmm. And it's okay. a recurring circle. I've lived in Joss. I've experienced Joss crisis. Hmm. I've lived in Kaduna. I've experienced Kaduna crisis. These hmm. things keep happening every hmm. time. And it's basically the same emotion you're going through. You deal with the PTSD from this one. Hmm. And then you move to the next one. one. Hmm. You that, and you are in another one. So it's, hmm. it's like something is trying to chase hmm. you. Hmm. It's time to be in Nigeria. Hmm. Mm. It almost feels like it almost feels like living in Nigeria is an extreme it, sport. Exactly, yes. it almost feels like it almost feels like living in Nigeria um, sums up to living with a shadow of fear. You have a cloud of fear all over you if you are living in Nigeria. Mm. Blessing. Okay, going back to so you know Taiwo mentioned earlier she was talking about Christopher Okibo. He's mm. a poet. Well, he was a poet and he died mm. during, during the, the Civil war. Nigeria. Civil War. So mm. these lot that we've heard about, and uh, some of the most some of their works documented things that happened at that time. We also heard stories about uh, about them being victims of targeted harassment, like Fela Kuti. Fela Kuti of course. Mm -hmm. The community of creators in Nigeria. Do you think that? There might be, there might come a time where there will be victims of targeted harassment because, like you say, you people are able to um, say things, express through emotion, and yeah. through that, people are able to find humanity in these stories that maybe the news would not be able to capture perfectly. Do you mm -hmm. think that they would now turn on you guys and say, okay, we, we have to maybe uh, silence these people, restrict their voices, restrict mm. their freedom of expression? Do you, have yeah. you ever thought about that? Have you ever wondered about that? I have, I have wondered about that. And um, before I go further, it's, it's as basic as talking about sexual harassment, for instance. Mm. I have a piece called mm. Don't Call Me Sexy. Um, mm. And it oh. was... Is like a memoir of every single, or not every single, majorly the most, uh, the ones I could remember the sexual harassment or public mm. harassment mm. I had gone through as a person. And when it dropped, I had people messaging me to say, oh, you didn't have to put your business out there. Oh, mm. you're a feminist. Oh, you're this. So for something <laughs> as basic as that, I still mm. got a certain amount of hatred yeah. um, and backlash. Not hatred mm. per se, I would say, because there was no backlash. threat in my life personally. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. backlash on mm. that. So, People will always have a problem with what you say. Mm -hmm. People will always have a problem with your means of expression, and it's up to you to remain true. When mm -hmm. Aman Poor asked um, Fem uh, Fals, Fals Falana uh, about if he was scared that he would be silenced, Fals said, in Nigeria, yeah. you just want to be from dying. Yeah, he I said, watched that. He, he said, I am rich, but I could be ill and go to a hospital and die. Hmm. Because they didn't yeah. transfuse the correct blood, I could I could be shot by a stray bullet. Something hmm. could happen to you, could happen to you. And in my piece, I worry. The first line is, I worry that I will be next, hmm. that I will become another statistic in a poorly reported news bulletin. Hmm. And that's it. Mm -hmm. It's it's a possibility. That won't gag me. That won't stop me from putting out my work. Mm. And it, I may have to put a lot of um, consideration into my safety as regards publicly expressing things, but it doesn't mean I don't have them documented. Mm. Okay. And when in a position of safety or better stance or in better climbs, of course, these are things I'll be willing to chart. Of course, mm. these are um, terrains that I'll be willing to really express. Because to be fair, nothing is certain. Life yeah. is, um, is fleeting. How I would say is Rumpankara 
is very vain. It could break. It could just mm. burn. Anything could happen to it. Mm. So if you don't speak up, imagine dying with all that voice. Imagine yeah. dying with all that power. Imagine mm. dying with all that change that you didn't change. Absolutely. I mean, in Nigeria, anything could, like he, like you have rightly said and Faust had said, anything could kill you in Nigeria. So, you know, you might as well be exactly. while you're alive use your voice to inspire the change that you want to see but you mentioned something about mental health when you were speaking and so i just wanted to ask um yeah. has these events had anything to do with your mental health and i would say maybe you could speak to speak on behalf of other creatives um do you think this might have had an impact in their mental health as well yes this has had an, a terrible toll on my mental health I have not worked on anything mm -hmm. um, outside this particular SaaS. The freelance projects I have been doing for the campaigns, the br brutality, the killing, those are all I've worked on for the past two weeks. Um, I couldn't process working on anything else. Mm -hmm. I have spent an unhealthy amount of hours consuming a lot of pain and gory videos that on a normal day I will skip because yeah. I need to understand i need i need answers i i want to leave but i need answers so this has been yeah. taking a toll on, on it has taken some toll on my mental health well thankfully um i'm a very expressive person as regards my mental health so i've I speak openly about the fact that, oh, this is making me sad. This is making me depressed. And I mm. try as much as possible not to fall into um, survivor's remorse. They mm. call it survivor's remorse. And try sometimes to get away, maybe watch a funny video, watch a cartoon. Yeah. I know it yeah. may seem insensitive, but I needed to hold myself together to be able to put out the, the information that is needed of me. Because mm. if I... If I cry, say, if I have to voice something for maybe an hour and I end up crying for three hours, mm. I am no good to the movement yeah. if I am not able to put out this voice that people need to hear. So yeah. I need to cry, cry, recover, be strong, strong break down, put myself together and still mm. keep forging on. Because people died for this. People yeah. lost their Absolutely. houses for this. People Absolutely. lost their children for this. So mm. there's not time to... to Yes, I need a break, but, and I take my break when I need it. A big shout out to Mental Health Aware NG. I see they're giving therapies and like their yeah. mental health organizations yeah. giving um, free counseling for yeah, free NSAS related mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. issues yeah. and everything. Yeah. Like so, they're reaching out. So I think it's very important. And creatives are having blocks. Um, mm -hmm. It depends on what inspires your art. Some people are inspired by dark emotions, and they, they're they're creating and putting work out there and doing their best. Because this has to be documented. But aside that, it's been a toll on my person. Taking a toll on me. Hmm. Can I ask? It's, um, it's... But okay, apart from watching films and just trying to find jokes and things that like comedies and things to, um, do you have support around you? Because I think that's a question. That's something for a lot of Nigerians. A lot of Nigerians are going through. They're going through mm. the ringer at the moment. So do you have support around you, family, friends, and that yes. is just keeping you sane? Do you have that? Yes. Okay. I, I, I am so grateful that I, I do have that currently. Because uh, yeah. I had to, I did COVID, the whole COVID lockdown, I was alone. Hmm. And, uh, hmm. That wasn't, that that, not I, be I went easy. from being super yeah, productive been easy at all. Hmm. To just waiting to see the next day. So um, the whole lockdown, the whole, I think, few months, I, I, I was unable to travel interstate and all that. So I'm mm -hmm. very grateful I have people around, people I can discuss the news I ingest with. Mm -hmm. Um People are, that can tell me, okay, you need to drop your phone. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Drop your phone and yeah. move or eat or um, make me make a comment that makes me smile or mm -hmm. just exist. The presence mm -hmm. of people has helped greatly. And if people, are, if you're having to go through this alone, then I know it's a lot. And please make phone calls, video call your friends. Just try and reach out to people, um, particularly people that have a history of maybe having break breakdowns, anxiety. Anxiety is skyrocketing this time. PTSD yeah. for people that can't even speak on what they've gone through. Um, yeah. Depression, hopelessness. Hopelessness is it. I've seen mm. a ton of suicide notes on Twitter between mm. mid of the, mid the middle of the protest till maybe today. People mm. keep dropping hints and people have to contact them, try to reach out to them, take them to the hospital because there's a feeling of hopelessness around. Yeah, absolutely. Around somehow helps curb that. You know what you said about survival's remorse? I think that a lot of people are feeling that because yeah. for me, it was a thing of even if you want to find something to watch, but these then you remember that people died. So you yeah. feel like you're not 
deserve to exactly. even exactly. I can't laugh so many people. I watch. I can't even laugh to be fair. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. laugh. Just, I swear. You know how yeah. you know how we want to yeah. we want to get we want to find a means of escape by doing something else. Like when I turn to maybe when I go off of social media and I'm trying to watch a movie, I'm telling myself, but people have died. Like yeah. why do you think you deserve people those why? people that have died could have been watching comedy. Why do you yeah. think you deserve to watch comedy? Yeah. Don't you think you need to keep yourself abreast all of the latest information and all that? So oh, yeah, it's a mixture of anxiety. It's a mixture of anxiety, you know, sadness and you know, escape with laughter, then you come back to the reality of the emotions and then you're hopeless. It's it really is it, it really is um a very, very, very tough time to be a Nigerian, to be a Nigerian youth at this time. Honestly, um I think blessing... it's being a tough time to be Nigerian. <laughs> yeah, I saw it. I saw it. I Okay, so let's let's just shift this uh, a bit. Blessing, when did you learn about the, the Nigerian civil war? I just know I heard about it. I never formally learned it in school. Mm. Social Do you remember what age you were? Uh, maybe 10, 13. Wow. I, I, can't yeah. even, I can't even remember when That's I heard it. I just know. Yeah, because I did not. I only, I only knew about it because I only knew about the Civil War through a book, through okay. Half I, of the Year. No, That's not much where I have all that my information I'm very about close to my grandmother, war. and she was around during the Civil War. I'm very close yeah. to my grandmother, and she lived through the Civil War. So she, she told me um, okay. about it. So that's Sorry. how I got okay. to know about it. Because she told mm-hmm. me some, well, she censored some gory stories. I'm mm-hmm. sure she censored a lot. Oh, but nice she enough. mentioned a few. So mm-hmm. the reason why I'm asking is because a lot of the uh, narratives we have from uh, around that time, it's mostly from the male perspective. Um, mm-hmm. So now, obviously, we've, we've the events of the last couple of days, Nigerians are drawing parallels between this event in 1993, between this event and the war. Obviously, the war, I mean, there's no grade of uh, horrific crimes and killings and stuff. But I mean, people are traumatized now. And mm. I, I would imagine people were traumatized then. So in drawing well, parallels... If with, you've seen pictures. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so people are uh, drawing parallels with this time and different events in our history and some are going as far back as the Biafran war now do you think that there's a difference in the narrative now in terms of the role women played in this movement in the protest compared to what we don't know because i don't think we know about the roles any women played at that time during the Biafran yeah. war compared yeah. to now and what just happened do you think that there's a shift and when you're preserving this, when creatives are immortalizing this uh, for history, women will have a place in this movement for the future ge- generations. Do you think that? Yes, women will have a place in this movement for the future generation. And there hasn't been proper documentation of the roles of women in the Biafran war. Because mm-hmm. I, if, if you ask maybe the list of women that did something at a certain point in time, then people would have that. But in the Biafran war, when it's mentioned, it was you barely... You barely, mm-hmm. you barely, maybe except on personal accounts from people yeah. or families. Yeah. But I haven't heard it. And I plan to post, um, post 20th October, I plan um, to get as many uh, autobiographies or historic Nigerian books that were written objectively and not history textbooks now. Written not necessarily objectively, because again, mm, that were mm. written by yeah. people to get as many perspectives as possible on this on on the history on the issue on things that we we were told because i feel we need to ask questions for ourselves if we see how fast the narrative changed before our eyes in three Mm. days what happened 40 50 60 years ago what are we not being told who Mm. is not saying what they're supposed to say who is turning Mm. what they're supposed to say into Mm. so i think we're asking more questions for ourselves and this is good. This is a good thing because if you mm. ask, you will find your path. So this yeah. is definitely a good thing. And I, I, yeah. I hope that with this, more questions about the role of women in the Biafran war or in, in all the movements before then, aside being sturdy support to their husband, mm-hmm. um, will come up. Because mm-hmm. in history, all you would see is Queen Amina, the yeah. Rana, yeah. Um, just more um, me. Uh, mm-hmm. Kuti, more me, the mm-hmm. Kuti, uh, Mrs. Kuti and uh, the few others, just a, a little here and there, and a little. And I'm sure there are many. And the Aba Women's Riot. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. So I, I'm yet to, 
I am I am yet to because I I went to the um about I I attended a page play about about women's riot then yeah. and they made it seem if you hear about women's riot do you think it was a fight between it was a physical fight or a protest what do you think it was Apparently, I think he actually, I, I read about it. I read about it. I think at some point they first started, you know, protesting naked, and then eventually they started going with with, with um arms. I think um no, at some point they involved some arms. I don't know. I might be wrong. What protest. do you think? Apparently, it was a protest. Okay. Yeah. Uh, pointed that and out, the but again, I, they dispersed them with violence. The mm, colonial mm, officers. Yeah. Mm, they, they mm, 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 it wasn't a riot. It was. Mm -hmm. It was like. I'm not armed and you're coming at me. But and again, mm, this is so we can see history writing research. itself again. Do you know? Exactly. So this is subject mm. to more research. This is subject to findings and can change. So I'm just making this clear in, for the listeners that this is subject to more research. And we're not yeah. saying it's the law, but nobody has proof that those women were with arms. Actually. Yeah. Yeah, which is which is exactly what I was saying is uh, because you know historically we've had to rely on the word of mouth for the um, mm -hmm. preservation of all of this history. So whoever says this can decide to can decide to twist it however they want, and then it, it can, a lot of it can be can get lost in translation. So I mean the fact that we're here, one we we have we have creatives such as you, um, and then we have the help of social media where people are already you know preserving this information on drive. And, and clouds, yeah, photographers, yeah, we are so much. Photographers, filmmakers, photographers, filmmakers, spoken word artists, yeah. everybody, like every collective Musician. coming co coalescing together as one to ensure that they preserve this as much as they can for our future generations so nobody loses touch of what we fought for in our generation so i mean it's a yeah. very very good springboard can i add something yeah you know we started yeah. this mentioning you the the people that we know that the uh, writers that we everyone knows about so we mentioned yeah. them while well, listening can them lot mm -hmm. right but people yeah. in case you're listening they are female writers they're women writers that wrote about the Biafran war. We've got Flora mm -hmm. Wapa and Buchi Emecheta. Obviously, and a lot of people course. know about Chimamanda. Chima, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Chima but Manda. but mm -hmm. we need to give flowers to these women that actually mm. they set the they set the tone for Chimamanda. So mm. Chimamanda is because of these two women. So mm. there are books that these women actually have written about the Biafra war. So you can get it from another perspective. And obviously, this is just to say it's it's giving you a balanced view, not trying to say the perspective we've got it from is bad, but it's a balanced mm -hmm. view from all it's a balanced view, yes. Very balanced yeah, from every person, yeah. every Absolutely. kind of person. Yeah. Absolutely. Um <laughs> do you guys think that music like music could do a whole host of things with what's happened now yes. in terms yes. of 30 yes. years now. Remember, you know how we talk about Fela? Can you remember Fela? Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. These mm -hmm. songs of Fela, do you think in mm -hmm. 30 years, these mm -hmm. kids will be like, Brenner boy, that Uncle Brenner boy, he sang yeah. that song. Do you, do you think that that could work? <laughs> that could work. That yeah. could work. I have never, I have never underestimated. I know that musicians have influence. Yeah. But say, for instance, you see Small Doctor. He played a pivotal role in Lagos protest yes. for the NSA. Mm. I, mm. I didn't know that. I would normally, mm. I would not yeah, peg him for that sort of thing. thing. Mm. At all, exactly. Man. I would never peg him for that kind of thing. But he has influence of the the grassroots people, the mm. street mm. boys. Yeah. The people, people cannot access for fear. He mm. has access to those people. And mm. if you tell me. Anything Small Doctor drops is a hit. If mm. you, it's not a hit on the airwaves, that's the airwaves business. But in the streets, it's always it a hit in the West. Mm. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. If Small mm. Doctor starts to put infused consciousness in his music, mm. hey, let's even keep Small Doctor aside. If someone like Nera Mali starts to infuse consciousness mm. in his mm. music, yes. Yes. Like, yes. So do you think we can then decide to go beyond music and ensure that these people, you know, if, even though they put conscious, you know, they start to put a lot of consciousness into their music, but if these people can be the voice for, you know, educating most of this marginalized and the street boys, the ones you will see on Twitter, if they can, you know, start to champion the cause to educate these young people on, um, you know, the Nigerian dream and what to expect from, a, from an election, educate them on the electoral processes so that come you know the next election 2023 That's then true. we have an arsenal of young people of um the young Hi. people who have been excluded you know cha mm. championing our cause um i i am a strong believer that sometimes it's unfair to put so much pressure on certain mm. people by virtue of their status okay. if i sing well that does not make me 
a, a warrior, for instance. Mm. I'm not mm-hmm. slighting anybody, mm. but mm. we all have roles. Yes, mm-hmm. they lend their voices to this cause and are able to mobilize the people. But mm-hmm. how about if they mobilize these people by virtue of their influence, we then get people that are legally inclined? Because let's face it, I don't think we were taught the constitution in school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yet. No, we weren't. Except maybe you know snippets of the constitution by virtue of advocacy. I don't, but I don't an know. Average no. person, Okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> An average person, the most you will be surprised wasn't the constitution. For instance, attempted suicide carries a one-year jail term and or really? payment. Wow, really? Wow. Yeah, in the, in the lunatic act. Yeah. Uh, yes. So in the lunatic act from the ni- early nineties, there's a lunatic the act. Oh no. <laughs> okay, so you should you should you should look up that. And so, for instance, yeah. these people are, yes, they're celebrities. Yes, they're figures that are idolized, mm-hmm. but they may not necessarily be able to convey this. They're not educators. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. are what they are. They are musicians. They have influence. So if these musicians can gain, um, give, get the access to the people and then mm-hmm. bring people that can break this down in the streetest way possible. Mm-hmm. I'm saying music because how many people are comfortable enough to read? But you listen to music in the train, in the radio, in the in the car, on the in bike, and then yeah. it sticks to you. It, not, even if you don't download right. it, I know songs I've never downloaded. Yep. By virtue of passing, it sticks mm. to my memory. It sticks yeah. to my mind. So yeah. Yep. So True. Easy, True. That's why music is the easiest. Not everybody has money to go to the cinema to watch 1960. Mm-hmm. Not nope. everybody has money to buy books. Historic mm. books are expensive. Like mm-hmm. 6,000, 10,000 naira. Who is going to carry 10,000 naira and buy Minimum mm. wage is thirty. People, 000, are, people, are, are, people that are people that are people that are still trying to find the means to eat. They are trying to eat three times a minimum day. Wage is thirty thousand. Yeah. Minimum wage is thirty thousand, and a book is six thousand. Hmm. Why will I feed my family of maybe five children with twenty four thousand so that I can read a book of six thousand? Hmm. But I will listen to a song that my friend sent to me via Bluetooth. Obviously. Hmm. 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 That's and right. How many That's people right. access podcasts? So this That's is a right. reality. And if media houses aren't as bad as they are in the country, mm-hmm. they would have been a good place. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that uh, yeah. Is, That's absolutely right. Um, you know, when you're saying um, books are expensive, so if you want to buy a book at 6000 and obviously there isn't a lot of money in the economy and everything, do you think that when we get a chance, because I believe maybe we will because of this... The, the, this uh, set of Nigerians seem to be really eager to change mm. the narrative. So when we get that chance, do you think that we need to invest in the art and culture, especially so? Because no matter how much spoken word artists, poets, writers would Im- would would express themselves, express the emotions that people were going through during these momentous events, horrific, but they're still momentous somehow. Mm. No matter how much they yes. express, and we have these books, and we have these verses, poetic verses and plays and stuff, if we don't, if, if a country doesn't invest, though, in these areas of arts and culture, we could do all of this, but in 30 years, it's still not going to work. So do yeah. you think that do you think that investment is absolutely necessary? It's absolutely vital. And do you think that's where we were lacking from, where a lo- it wasn't invested as much into when we were kids? And, you know, you know, when you're a kid and you're experimenting with different things, that's when your your mind opens up to different worldviews and stuff like that. Do you mm-hmm. think that's where we were lacking? Mm-hmm, yeah. Investment is important. Investment in it to pre- for to preserve the art and to make it available in years to come, and not just on the plaque in your house, but just the children is important. Mm-hmm. But um, growing up for many children is now that you're able to say, "Oh, I want to be a photographer when I grow up," and nobody bats an eyelash. Yeah. Imagine, yeah. imagine then going maybe 15 years ago saying, "Oh, I want to be a YouTuber." What is a YouTuber? <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. And these guys are raking millions. Oh, you say I want to be a graphic. De- I want to be designing flyer. What? That's so. That's you so. don't want to be a doctor. That's so. Okay. So yeah. Now, the, for many artists, say for mm-hmm. myself, I freelance. It's it's freelancing. It's doing it for the passion. I don't yeah. necessarily get money from my poetry or advocacy or anything. I just mm. do it because I want to see a change and I'm doing it because I want to do it. Very few people make money from their art with regards advocacy because mm. it steps yeah. on toes. If you're speaking yeah. against the powers that be, oh, you're not mm. going to really. So you yeah. have to have something going. Yeah. There are certain organizations that laid off their staff for protesting. 
What? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that. I heard that. Yes. I heard that. Yeah. Yes. Organizational no. that said, we went to protest. We have to lay wow. you on the public and not be associated. It's wow. So these are the realities on the ground. So if you're saying we're going to invest in this new Nigeria to say these things are going to hold power, these things are going to be funded, then we, aside the funding, we must be willing to give the room for expression, mm. full room for expression, mm. and not people tiptoeing and walking on eggshells because they are verse yeah. upset a certain group of elites. Yeah. yeah so that, yeah. that, it goes way beyond the money. Um, and the starving artist narrative, of course, is dying out, but then it goes beyond the money. Is it really that starving artist narrative? Is it really dying out in Nigeria anyway, do you think? Hmm. I think with the presence of the internet and people being able to work with, from my standpoint, the creatives I know, being able to work with international organizations or international mm -hmm. bodies by virtue of freelancing on certain freelance websites has gradually curbed it. If you're okay. willing to evolve and put your job on the internet or the work you do on Twitter, Facebook, hell, even just WhatsApp, people mm -hmm. are selling services on WhatsApp. People are being assistants to reply emails. These are the yeah. basic, barest minimum digital, uh, virtual assistants and creative writer for this, script writer for that, speech writer for this, speech writer advocacy campaign for this organization. And the international organizations are more willing because they can access people that are indigenous to say, hey, you run this for us because you are on ground. You know the reality. You know the narrative. But how many people can access that? Mm -hmm. There's still the whole artists aren't making so much, but sometimes you have to find a way to fund your hustle your artistic hustle mm. realistically mm. so mm. if you want to do music now you would see that oh maybe you have to get an actual job to be able to fund your studio sessions to mm -hmm. so, until you blow <laughs> so, so you just have to find a way around it okay so blessing this was uh this is it was really lovely to have you on and talk about Thank your work and obviously we know it's not. We know it's not easy to even appear and talk about things because of what everyone's going through at the moment in Nigeria. So thank you very much. Yeah, I wanted to say that. Um, I wanted to ask if Blessing will be very kind to share some of her work with us. It would be an honor to exactly. To so some of your so work. this episode um, wind down session, we are making it a more. If you would like to share something with us, if you yeah. want, just to end round up the uh, podcast. Okay. Um, I'm just going to share something. I think okay. about two minutes because I voiced okay. it already. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm beating the drums for you. <laughs> We're ready. No We're ready. Um, heads up, it's not particularly a happy piece. Mm. Again, I already did mention that my yeah. is okay. Yeah, yeah, we get oh, okay. it. Nigeria is ash for she has no color. She is dark for she has no light. She runs topless in the streets for she refuses to be consoled. She's dripping blood all over from the cuts and bullet wounds. Will you stitch her and wrap her wounds in fresh bandages? Her steps are staggered. She's falling. Will you support her? Drained from all the anarchy, she has known no peace for ages. Will you join your hands to solve this, to fix her, to take her home for she and her offspring have been displaced for too long? Will you clothe her nakedness rather than turn the other way in spurious modesty while leaving her buttocks for the world to behold? Will you dust the filth of her body, remove the thorns from her flesh and the log in her eyes and the speck in ours? Nigeria is ash, for her color has been drained from her veins and the residue washed off her skin long before she knew resistance. Nigeria is ash. Please bring back her green and white stripes. Give her ego back its strength. Restore dignity to her gallant horses who now cower in shame for the existence of unity of rivers Niger and Benue is now just a tale by moonlight. Bring back her shield of fertile black soil without the blood she was forced to drink and the flesh she was made to eat of. Her adornment, the garland of grace, the costal spectabilis has weeded. The nation's flower is gone, and so is her beauty. Unity and faith are lost. Find them. Peace, a thing of the past, and our progress is up for sale to the highest bidder. Nahugu Bayam. Our coat of arm is armless. Mend the sleeves. To experience a rebirth, mend 
the sleeves. Nigeria, decide. My goodness, that was incredible. That was incredible. What? No, I've never heard a piece about Nigeria said so beautifully. That's that's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you for the round of applause. Thank you very much. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well done. That was amazing. That was amazing. It touched you. Yeah, it did. I won't lie. It did. I mean, the words the very graphic detail the no the delivery no it was it was phenomenal thank you so much for sharing your heart with us blessing thank you so much for having me thank you you're, so much Tyro. you're welcome it's been a pleasure like we it's been a pleasure to have you on board and we look forward to having you um on the show another time and i look forward to oh, listening to your work i look forward yeah. to watching your pieces i look forward to seeing you on the big screen because yes. the, sky is, the sky is the stepping stone for you blessing yeah. Amen to that. Amen to that. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So, guys, uh, this is where we uh, wrap it up. Uh, Thank you for listening. And we hope that you would be moved by that amazing piece by Blessing Kure as we were, or as we are, because I think we will still be moved uh, by it after. So, thank you everyone for listening. And, yeah, that's it. Thanks, guys. Uh, See you next week. Bye. (laughs) It's been the Life at the Age podcast. Please take care. Bye.